Hello everyone, I hope you've been well and welcome back to a slightly longer video today. Uh, excuse if my voice is a little bit crackly, I'm still a little bit unwell, but we are going to be jumping into some fun. Now as you've seen by the title and the thumbnail, I'm going to be tackling some of these nostalgic cosplays that I've always wanted to do. I feel like cosplay wise nostalgia has come up so much this year. Um, I think the main cause of that is the bigger convention here in Adelaide which hasn't been on for a few years, Avcon, was finally on again this year and it was so much fun. It definitely felt like old Avcon. This was maybe my like 10th or 11th time going and it was the first big anime convention I ever went to so you can kind of understand why, I, <laughs> why I'm a little bit more attached to it than other conventions. While planning my costumes, one thing I knew I really wanted to do was Katara from Avatar The Last Airbender. I've loved that show forever and this is actually the first time I finally cosplayed from it. I think it's always hard to choose sometimes exactly which character to do, um, but I'm really pleased I ended up doing Katara. Uh, I ended up making my kind of own version of her, uh, where I just pulled inspiration from the show and other designs that people have made too. I also made Umbreon as well, which Again, so Pokemon has been something so special to me and to be able to finally cosplay one of the Pokemon themselves and just go crazy with the design was also amazing. So I feel like I was already going into Avcon very nostalgia based, but actually going, it definitely made me nostalgic for like other series that I was into when I was a little bit younger, but it also just reminded me of all these different costumes that I've been wanting to do for a really long time, but just never got around to it whether it was because of money, time, or just confidence. Now, I have already tackled quite a few nostalgic costumes this year. I mentioned Katara and Umbreon. Um, I also did an Espeon look as well, which was so much fun. Um, and then I've also cosplayed some Digimon stuff. Now, for those who don't know, like, I love Pokemon, but Digimon was like my childhood. So finally cosplaying Rika from it was amazing. Uh, and then I just recently did a femme version of Takuya as well. And we shot that on some train tracks, which if you've seen Digimon Frontier, that's how they get, it's a whole thing but that was definitely a bit of a dream come true as well. I also finally cosplayed Yennefer as well from the Witcher DLC. Uh, this one isn't quite as old nostalgia wise as my other costumes in this video and that's why I didn't end up including it but still that was a really fantastic thing to finally do that outfit and get some really cool photos. I also maybe or may not have some One Piece costumes in the works, which to be fair, the live action was so dang good that I was like, well, gotta bring it back. <laughs> back in the day, I did quite a few One Piece costumes. I'm talking like like half a decade ago. Uh, so it's really cool to kind of bring some of the back, that back as well. And I'm keen to share that as well. Now I'm going to get you guys to follow along as I put together these costumes. Uh, some of the pieces I bought online, a lot of it was thrifted, and then some of the pieces I handmade as well. So I'll show you through that, show you through some of the makeup processes, and then taking some of the photos as well. Okay, but actually jumping into the characters here, as you've seen by the thumbnail, we have Misa from Death Note, Tharja from Fire Emblem, and then Rin from Blue Exorcist. Starting off with Misa, now, first of all, OG, we love. <laughs> um, Death Note was one of the first anime I watched. It's actually the first manga I ever bought and I still have them and I still reread them pretty regularly. Such a good story. And who doesn't love Misa? I mean, she's just, she's a goth queen. The aesthetic, oh, we love. <laughs> this one's especially funny because like way back in the day, like probably 10 years ago, um, my second photo shoot ever, I did like a Misa inspired look. There's this really cool outfit she has at kind of the end of the series. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, I can kind of put that together. I think I thrifted some stuff and used a skirt I already owned. This one was a little bit interesting though, because I actually had bright red hair at the time. I used to dye my hair red pretty regularly. And so I thought it would be kind of cool to do like a, I called it like a blood version of Misa, uh, just cause back then I didn't really have any weeks so I would just use my own hair you know I did the little the little twin things that she has in her hair um, we took these at a, a at a train station at night which is actually kind of funny because that was just like a random idea we had but that train station at night in the dark and the lights I have used for so many superhero shoots since so that was a very good find back in the day anyway I got dressed up we took some kind of cute photos some of them were a little bit more edgy um, but 
doing that so long ago and now bringing it back essentially is just so awesome and I loved being Misa. Uh, I didn't specifically want to do her kind of canon outfit. Uh, that being said, she does have many different outfits in the manga, in the anime, the covers, the art. So I kind of took the inspiration of that more goth look and then just added a bunch of details until I was happy with it. I also really wanted to make her little, her little like hand scythe bracelet things. Uh, back in the day when I would like look up Death Note cosplays, a lot of the girls had those and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I definitely had to include that as well. Alrighty, let's hop on into it. Voiceover Jessa here and this is the dress I bought for Misa. It has some really cute details like these little bat wings, a corset waist, and then the skirt has this really lovely panelling and then the mesh underneath. I bought this costume online because it was on sale and I'm so excited to use it for more looks after this. I also had some lace gloves and these really cool they're kind of ripped but still have a really nice pattern stockings as well. This is some footage of me trying everything on together for the first time and I really loved how it turned out. I definitely felt like the goth queen and I feel like Misa would certainly approve. Now because I was able to mostly use things that I already owned or things that I bought, I didn't have too much crafting but as I mentioned I really wanted to make those like hand scythe bracelets that Misa has. I started out by just having a bit of a rough pattern and then using cheap craft foam. I would draw out the spike and then cut it out and then I would make sure to make one or two of the spikes a little bit bigger. Um, I knew I wanted three on each one and then I just made sure I had a reference photo as well so I could keep an eye on it. Nowadays I do tend to use black warbler in a lot of my projects so it means I have heaps of leftover scraps and whatnot. I try and keep as many as I can because if there's little cutoffs like this I can usually find um, just enough to cover the spikes. And then for the slightly bigger spikes I actually went in and started just kind of putting two pieces of the black warbler together and then just layering that on top. The great thing about Warbler is that when you do heat it up with a heat gun, it gets quite sticky and it sticks to itself super well. So if you are wanting to almost like patch together a sheet, you can do that pretty successfully. I also make a cuff out of Warbler and foam and let that cool down around my wrist to hold shape. To attach the actual spikes to the cuff, I just heat up both sides and press them together. Because they're not really huge props or they're not that heavy, it's able to support itself fine. I did have to go in and cut the angles just a little bit so they would fit together a bit nicer. The spikes turned out a little bit thicker than I first intended, but I think this worked out because they showed up really well in photos. And of course, I used my little googly eyes to create some rivets and add a bit of texture to them as well. Now, ideally you would prime black warbler with something like wood glue, but for this project, because it was a bit simpler, um, I just went in and spray painted it black. I went over all of those googly eyes or those rivets with some silver paint to make them pop and then got some inexpensive chain that I just cut down to size so that they would hang off and again add that really cool detailing that you see in the image. I just used hot glue to attach everything. Um, you can certainly use a stronger glue but these held out just fine and I think they turned out really awesome. For the attachments, I just used some Velcro and some felt. This was easy enough and I just attached it all with hot glue again. I used a glossy black spray paint so you can see it's got a nice shine to it as well. Now for the wig, this is an existing one I already had. It was actually my taco wig. Um, I'm glad I held on to it because it made a really good base for my Misa wig. I didn't want it to be too yellow and I feel like this wig was the perfect kind of bleached blonde um, but still had a bit of yellow that the anime and manga tends to have. The wig already had bangs which was fantastic so I just had to go in and add those two little twin tails. I ended up cutting the length a little bit as well just to make them really pop out. In a lot of the images those little streaks do tend to be a bit shorter than the rest of the hair. I added a little bit of hairspray to help set the style but also to give a bit of volume as well. And then I just went in with this silver cord again just to kind of act as a bit of a hair tie um, and add a little bit more to the hairstyle. I 
I was really happy with how this wig turned out and I love that it had a little bit of a curl as well. I think it suited Misa and my look super well. For my makeup I of course went in with some foundation and then some powder to set everything. I went a little bit heavy with the pink blush so I would show up in the harsh lights and then of course went in and highlighted my cheekbones, my nose and the top of my lip too. Kept my brows pretty simple and just did what I usually do for my own hair. And then for the eyeshadow I of course am doing a dark gothic look so I'm starting off with a grey base and then basically going in and putting a lot of black in the creases making sure to grab my under eye as well. The best thing to do for looks like this is to build up in layers and make sure you continuously blend to the rest of your eyes just so it looks nice and contrasted but it's still nice and blended with everything else. I go in with a pop of silver to match the silver details on the costume and then blend that out. I add my usual highlighter to the inner corners of my eye and then it's time for eyeliner. I do this like usual and make sure to add just a bit of a wing too so that my false lashes look fantastic. And then I go in with a pencil liner just to line my waterline and my eyes to darken them up. Can't forget the trusty mascara and then I put on some pink lips as well as going in with my favourite little fluttery false eyelashes. There is my dark gothic look worthy of my Misa costume. Here is an insight to my backdrop. Basically I put this on my desk and then add usually some kind of fleece and for this I added some beautiful lace and then the tripod and camera sits on my bed. Once I'm happy with how the backdrop is looking it's time to put on the costume and ta-da we have Misa. I added a black choker and some silver jewellery I got from a different costume and once everything came together I was so pleased with how it all looked especially with the dark makeup. I also really enjoyed putting this look together because I wasn't super keen on the canon looks. Being able to just create something fun like this but still play on her gothic themes was really awesome. Also that death note is my original death note from 10 years ago so it was great being able to reuse that. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed looking into my Misa creation and love Death Note as much as I do. Now moving on, we have Tharja from Fire Emblem. Who, who doesn't love Tharja? <laughs> she is very iconic. Even if you're not familiar with the character, probably have seen her design around. Um, it's a bit funny. I actually haven't played that much Fire Emblem, but I got Fire Emblem Awakening. I think I borrowed it from a friend and I just played it nonstop. I just, it was such a fun game to me. Um, my top character was actually Pain, which I would love to cosplay her, but in this round, I didn't particularly want to deal with that much armor. Um, but number two was definitely Tharja. She was my second strongest. Um, and just her design is wonderful, and she's just such a fun character. Uh, back in the day, it was, I did always want to do a cosplay from Fire Emblem, but I guess I didn't particularly have the confidence uh, to really pull off Tharja. And now that I'm a little bit older as well, I feel a lot more comfortable doing it. So I thought, yeah, why not? Let's, I bought a few base items and then just pretty much made the rest of it which was really fun. Let's take a look at it. To make this costume I needed a few different materials starting out with this red shiny one I already had lying around. I bought some gold textured fabric as well as this lovely blue velvet. I used this existing cape as a pattern and of course the cat had to see what I was doing and I basically just cut that out. Because the fabric wasn't wide enough I did have to add a little extra there too and then I also cut out the red fabric. To get the cape to sit how I wanted it, I added a few darts just so it wrapped around my shoulders nicely. For the wonderful back design, I used a bunch of cords and ribbons in gold that I bought online and also thrifted. I also used some gold charms as well as some gold lace. I used a mixture of sewing and glue to put it all together. I really wanted a spell book so I found this one and then covered it in black paint and then I used a bunch of gold charms to recreate the design that she has on her spell book. I had to hodgepodge some of it together but I think it turned out really cool. 
Because the red fabric was a bit stretchier than the velvet, I pinned the absolute heck out of it and then went over it with my sewing machine, obviously leaving a bit of a hole so I could flip it right side. I bought this red sparkly fabric like three years ago maybe. It was super cheap so I just got heaps of it and so I'm pleased to finally use it. Of course I'm going in and top stitching that just to make it look really nice and pretty as well. While Tharja doesn't actually have sparkly in a fabric of the cape, I feel like it does add that magic effect and suits her sorcerer vibes. Jumping back to the spell book, I go in with hot glue and place the charms around. Like I said, I just kind of got a rough idea of what it looked like going by the image and then just rearranged it slightly depending on the charms I had and the position that I personally liked as well. I also added a bit of brown faux leather and just glued this on as well, just to kind of replicate the straps. To finalise the details on the back of the cape, I just glued these kind of eye shapes made out of cord. You could certainly sew this entire thing, but in all honesty, I just did a bit of a mixture. Uh, I love hot glue, so if I can kind of get away with it, I do love to use it when I can. <laughs> This design is also more extra than her actual design, but I can't help it. I love adding my own flair to costumes when I can. I use some of that more gold lace just to line the entire cape as well. Now for the gold detailing around her hip and around her chest as well, basically what I did is I started out with a foam base and then I cut a similar size to that out of all of the gold fabric. There are a few ways to do this, you could certainly glue it down now, you don't even have to use foam, you can use interfacing, but personally I love doing it this way because it gives nice stability to the piece and my sewing machine can sew through a, you know, a general fabric and then through EVA foam really well and it just turns out really lovely. I then used a zigzag stitch to combine both hip pieces. These will be getting velcro at the back so I can easily take it on and off. For the front panel, I kept this quite simple. I started out with a paper pattern for both pieces. I used the same velvet for the larger triangle and then the gold wrapped around EVA foam for the smaller one. I finished the edges of the panel with sewing but then I hot glued some lovely gold cord to the end as well. I was a bit worried as how I was actually going to tackle the neck piece because it's a bit more complicated in that curve. So what I ended up doing is again making a paper pattern and then I cut out six shapes of EVA foam and then using a similar technique by sewing the fabric around the EVA foam. I then trimmed all of the excess fabric and once I had these, what I basically did was using another zigzag stitch, I basically put them together but just because of the way they're shaped it naturally creates a bit of a curl. I made five of these and put them all together and I was quite pleasantly surprised with how this turned out. I didn't really bother about doing the back and just added a ribbon instead just because my wig would be covering it anyway. Now onto the crown, this is some warbler that got heat damage outside, so I'm just heating it up and trying to get it nice and flat again. Warbler is amazing for things like that, you can generally reshape it easily enough. I draw out a pattern I'm happy with and then cut that out, and then I actually use a wig head just to kind of shape the crown as well. I'm using warbler just so it holds its shape in my hair nicely. I also use some warbler scraps on the book just to finish off the kind of closure, use some googly eyes of course for the rivets, and then I go in with some wood glue to prime that. I found these fantastic shoes from an op shop for super cheap and I thought they'd be the perfect base, I just needed to go in with some gold paint. Uh, I ended up doing two layers just to make sure that it was nice and opaque. I just used acrylic paint because I didn't care much but make sure you research leather or suede paint as well because that will affect how it sticks to the shoe. 
Once I was happy with all of the gold design on the notebook, I went in with a light purple colour and ended up drawing all these different designs. Again, I kind of went by the reference photo, but just because mine turned out a little bit differently, I did go in and add a few different effects that I liked as well. I also painted the lock I created out of Warbler, just a gold colour. I bought this base black wig online and then just trimmed up the bangs a little bit more. I ended up using black instead of a navy blue just because it was a bit more versatile and then I went in, she funnily enough has kind of similar hair to Misa so I was able to kind of create a similar hairstyle to that just in the black and I did give them a little bit more volume. The crown is just attached with elastic in the back and I just sewed that gold little charm on top as well and it just sits nicely on top of the wig. For the makeup I already have a base of foundation and powder and then it's time to go in with some blush. I'm really sticking to purple colours just to really suit her magic and then I go in with highlighter as well as doing my brows, making them nice and black to suit the wig. I kind of do like a half smoky look, but instead of building it up with blacks, I just build it up with progressively darker purple colors. Again, this is just something I thought would match the rest of the costume and also the props too. Again, I'm making sure to build it in layers and then also blending it out after each layer. And then of course I go in with a pop of sparkly purple eyeshadow on my lid. Can't forget the inner eye highlighter and then going in with that dark eyeliner again. I darken up the lower lash line with some black and purple too just to balance out my eyes. Gotta add on that mascara and then I go in with an even lighter pink than I did with Misa. And then of course, how could I forget the false lashes? And that is the purple smoky look for Thaja. Uh, I really like this and I should wear purple eyeshadow more because it's fantastic. And then of course it's time to put on the costume and become Thaja. I bought the black bodysuit online which yes is a pain to get on but it does look very cool. Um, I use an existing bra for this and then just add the gold details on. The neck piece isn't completely flush but that does mean that it's really comfortable and easy to move in. I couldn't help but create a bit more of an elaborate set. Uh, there's this wonderful figure where she's posing with all these different books, so of course I had to replicate that using some dried flowers and some curtains too. The spell book also turned out super awesome and I love it. Here's a shot of the full costume in action. I love how fluttery the cape is and the sparkle of the red fabric. I bought the gold cuffs online and have two on my wrists and two on my ankles as well. And you can see a bit of gold cord around my thigh. I'm actually just using a safety pin to keep that up and it seems to be doing the job well. The cape just ties around my neck with some ribbon and then the neck piece goes over that and ties at the back. Then I put my wig on and it covers any of the closures and ta-da, it all works out. It was really fun finally becoming Thaja and I hope you enjoyed watching the creative process and I'm sure I'll wear her again in the future. Alright, last up is Rin from Arno Exorcist or Blue Exorcist, which was a popular anime back in the day and I think the manga is still ongoing. Um, I do have a large chunk of the manga, but I haven't necessarily kept up to date with it. Now this one's interesting because the costume is deceptively easy. Back in the day, I didn't necessarily have the money to buy such a simple costume online, but it was just difficult enough with the specific tie and the patches and all of that, that back then my skills couldn't necessarily make it. I remember Blue Exorcist was pretty popular among my friend group back in the day. Uh, we really enjoyed watching it. And then I remember, <laughs> I remember browsing through DeviantArt. <laughs> And some of my friends or the community like groups that I was in would do like Rin tests and I thought they were so cool. I always wanted to be Rin but I just never got around to doing it. 
the great thing is that the majority of the costume was from an op shop so it was like $25 for absolutely everything of the costume and just required a little bit of alteration so it didn't take too long. Uh, it's definitely a more simple costume. I did decide in the end not to make his weapon just because I didn't really have time for it but I did make his little blue flame. That was like the iconic selfie that cosplayers would take and they had the like black hair and the little blue flame. Oh, when I put that costume on, I was very excited to see that. I did decide to do a femme version just to kind of make it a bit more comfortable, a bit more fun. There's so much good fan art of femme Rin that I just, I had lots of like designs to look at and to pick from, have a bit of fun with. And this is how the costume turned out. As I mentioned, I managed to find a white shirt, blazer, skirt, belt and tie for about $25 from the op shop. I loved the detailing on the shirt and the blazer and then all I needed to do was just hem up a few things to make it fit a bit better. I love being able to find existing pieces from op shops because not only is it great not having to make everything from scratch, but it's awesome reusing materials as well. I started off by painting the tie with just acrylic paint. I think this must have been like a school uniform one. Um, I really liked it because it wasn't too big and it just fit the costume really well. I started with the red paint and then went in with the black and then let that dry so I could do the white next. For the patch I opted to use EVA foam uh, just because it's really easy to paint on and I could glue it directly to the blazer uh, but it's also just really easy to cut so I basically just patterned it on paper and then transferred it to foam and cut that out. Here I'm just going in with some more red acrylic paint. Again I couldn't really be bothered priming it but usually if you want paint to really last on EVA foam you want to use some kind of primer. I'm also going in with a black sharpie just to outline all of the details. This just really makes it pop, especially on a black blazer. Once the tie is dry, I go in with the white lines, making sure I have a reference of Rin in his uniform next to me. I just do a few layers of the white as well to make sure it's thick enough. I ended up just freehanding the symbol on the bottom of the tie, but I think it turned out really cool and I love how the tie turned out. I knew I definitely wanted to make Rin's tail, so I got some wire and twisted it around itself. That little loop there will just allow it to go onto the belt. I also sewed a thin channel of fleece which goes around the wire. And then here I am just patterning out the end of the tail. Um, I just do this on EVA foam. There are probably a few ways to make it a bit more structurally sound, but this was honestly just the easiest way and it turned out fine. I was able to kind of flip it around and it supported itself pretty well. I covered both layers of that tail end in more black fleece and what you'll notice me doing in a tick is I do put on some popsicle sticks just to make the foam actually a bit stiffer. Ideally I would have done this between the two layers of the fleece but I kind of didn't think of it until after so I just went over here and just covered it with some more fleece. Luckily you can't tell and as you can see here it actually holds itself up really well and it's super poseable too. Uh, it's definitely the most fun part of this costume. <laughs> Next up was all of the hemming and sewing. Uh, this skirt I basically cut it apart because I loved how fluttery it was but I definitely needed to shorten it so that's what you see me doing here. And then for the white shirt I essentially took in the sides quite a lot that's what made it a lot more fitted. And then I did cut off a decent amount of the length as well, so I've just got to go around and hem the white shirt too. I had this leftover white bias tape, which was the perfect width to put around the blazer, so I'd basically just clip that into place and sewed it all up. Here you can see the white belt and I actually added just a little bit of chain. This is left over from my Mesa project, uh, just to, you got, got to have that edgy chain for Rin. <laughs> As I mentioned, the blue flame was a very important part of this costume, so I had some blue fairy lights and this foam, which was probably for some packaging. I just cut that into a flame style. I bunched up the fairy lights and then glued that on there. Just be a bit careful though, because styrofoam like this it will melt if you use too much hot glue. 
I glued on a clip which I used to attach it to my wig and then the battery pack just hangs behind it and can be tucked under. Here I am just gluing on that patch. And then I actually used the same wig that I used for my Thaja cosplay. I just did the more like anime pointed fringe. And then it's a pretty similar hairstyle. I just did thicker pigtails to kind of replicate that femme rin look. This is actually footage from my phone. It's the first time I tried everything on and I thought it was too cute not to share. I really loved how it looked. Out of all three looks, this is the most simple makeup. So as usual, I go in with foundation and powder. I do some thick brows, a little bit thicker than I did for Thaja. And then of course I go in with some blush and some highlighter like usual. I keep the eyeshadow fairly neutral with cream colors and of course going in to darken up the crease. I love how it looks in photos. And then I go in with a blue liner as well, just to add a bit of pop to the lower lash line. I lightly line my eyes with a black eyeliner. By finishing, I darken up my lower lash line and then a little bit more highlighter on my inner corners. I've got to pop on those false lashes, of course. And then I finish off with a pretty neutral lipstick, just adding a little bit of pink to the center. And that is my simple Rin makeup all done. Out of the three costumes, this was definitely the most simple, but I kind of wanted to approach it as if I was making it back then. So I did really simple techniques, nothing crazy, uh, definitely utilizing those op shop finds. Like I said, it was really cool seeing myself as Rin just because it's been such a dream for such a long time. Even if it is really simple, I had so much fun with it. The tail is definitely the most fun thing about this costume. Uh, as you can see here, I also go in with some thigh high socks and uh, you can't see them, but I am wearing some white boots as well. I hope you also enjoyed looking into my Rin costume and I'm sure young me would be very, very proud. <laughs> Alright, that is all of the costumes. I hope you enjoyed taking a bit of a look into the process of making them, of shooting them. Um, I did a bit of set design for them as well, which was really fun. This was a slightly longer project just because I was kind of jumping around between costumes and then taking all the final photos and whatnot, but I really enjoyed it. I think it was really fun being able to satisfy younger me as a cosplayer and do all these really cool things that I always wanted to. I suspect this won't be the last time I do this, so expect next year to probably do a part two of this or I tackle some more of my little nostalgia characters that I just never had the chance to do but probably will now. So yeah this is my, my little message to you as if you are a cosplayer. Um, maybe pick, pick a costume that you always wanted to do even if it's something where you can thrift from a store or just do like a half version of them. I feel like it was really satisfying and fun and it although I now have many more skills than I do and I have access to you know um, you know better sewing equipment, warbler, um, better armor supplies and plastic dip and all these things you know it was still really fun being able to just tackle especially Rin just doing what I probably would have done back then if I had the chance uh, so don't be afraid have a bit of fun with it um, and bring back that nostalgia thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye